We got to get rid of the lust in our life. We got to get rid of it. And every one of us in here is battling with some area of lust in our life. A better car, a better job, a better relationship. Every one of us in here is striving for this, this driving force in us at times that makes us go further than we want to go and stay longer than we want to stay. And this is the verse that God gave me, 2 Corinthians six seventeen. Why come out from among them? And be you separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Why come out from among them? See, you're undercover right now. You got to realize you're undercover because the world really doesn't know the gifts that God has given you. The world really doesn't know the anointing of God that's on your life because you've kept it undercover. Can somebody say amen? The world really doesn't understand and see the anointing that God really has on your life because you're really afraid to expose it and show it because you don't want to be rejected and you don't want to be judged and you don't want to be criticized. But the word says, why come out from among them? And the only, re the only way that you can even begin to come out from among them is to take that cover off. To go ahead and expose who you really are and what you're really about and where you're going and what you're doing and what the work God really has for you in your life. Because many of us are in the workplace, don't get me wrong, day in and day out, I work with and I deal with atheists. Day in and day out, don't get me wrong, I work with and I deal with multi-millionaires. Don't get me wrong, day in and day out, I work with people that are in the field that are toiling at the soil just like you may be doing today but the bible says why come out from among them because your word cannot be heard until you're separated from where they're at whether they be rich whether they be poor whether they be of some type of society whether they be nothing it really doesn't matter because when you come out and peel the cover off then your presentation can give them eternal life but when your cover is on you have nothing that you can say because you're undercover and the bible says in second corinthians 6 17 be you separate, not be ye separate. It's talking about you. Everybody say me. Say, I need to separate myself. I need to separate myself. And touch not the unclean thing. Here's the problem. In the church, we feel like to get along and so that our message can be heard, we start to touch that thing that is not a godly thing. Today is a day to cut it off. Joe started off by preaching, get rid of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Does this not go exactly along where Joe is going? Touch not the unclean thing. I'm going to tell you something right now. Today, if you will make a decision before the Lord that you're going to touch not the unclean thing and you're going to cut off these addictions and these things that pull at you and these areas of your life that you find yourself going down rabbit trails and you can't kind of get back out. God is ready to receive you. The Bible says God is ready to receive you. And some of you have got the anointing on your life to reach many people. And you're doing it. Yes, you're doing it. But let me tell you how you're doing it. You're doing it in your own flesh. You're doing it with your own works. You're doing it with your own talent. You're doing it with your own ability. And God is saying today, put all of that aside. I already know what you've got. I'm the one that made you. I'm the one that formed you. And I'm the one that called you by your name. Name. put it aside for a moment and lay it down so I can receive you you see we're living in a matrix and if you don't think we're in a matrix then you have no clue what you're involved in let me read to you what a matrix is a matrix is an environment or a material in which something develops a surrounding or a structure a grid an organization a flow of skills that is evolving and building and building and building let me tell you technology is stepping it up so fast so quick they are now 
producing embryos from certain components and they are structuring our DNA for future life to be better than it's ever been and it's all being done and contained in a lab. The matrix, the grid. Yes, we have a cell phone and know that it is totally connected to the grid. You can even get your Bible off the grid. Say it with me, the grid. You can get your recipes off the grid. You can learn how to get fitness and get exercise and to get health and nutrition off the grid. You can learn about your disease or your problem and the doctor's diagnosis off the grid. Welcome to the matrix. You know, a couple years ago when I was raising my children, I gave them a picture and I want to give it to you for one moment. I want to take you into my home for a moment. And I said, kids, the minute you walk out this door, you're going into the matrix. You're plugging up to the matrix and you're going into the matrix. And everything that happens out there today, good or bad or indifferent, is not real. It, you may see it, you may taste it, you may feel like it's real, it may hurt, but it is not real compared to the life to come. It does not have substance compared to the life to come. It does not even have an appearance of color and beauty to the life to come. It does not even have success. It does not even have any ability to the life to come. So what you're getting ready to go through out there, if somebody fusses at you, makes fun of you, or tells you you're great, just know that it really doesn't matter because it's nothing to the life to come. And if we could get our focus on where our life really is and where we're going and what the journey's really about and the life that is to come, this thing that we're going through today that's making us sad, depressed, discouraged, down, feel like giving up, really wouldn't matter because it's going to be a about the life to come. So let's get our focus off of right now and let's put it really where it's supposed to be, which is the life to come. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. You see, every word you speak and every move you make is being documented somehow. It says it in the Bible. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy Chapter 3, verse 2, turn with me really quick to 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Next verse. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent fierce, despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. Who in this place believes God, help, God helps you be good? There are going to be people out there that are despising you because you're trying to be good. Next verse. With traitors. Petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Next verse. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And all of those things that I just read out from you, let me tell you what his word says. Let me tell you what he said. In 2 Timothy, before you were ever born, he said from such, I'm warning you about the matrix. I'm warning you about the life to come. I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to you right now. When you get in that situation of any of those things happening, from such, turn away. Don't even let it bother you. Don't even let it take up your time. Don't even let it take your energy. Don't even let it make the focus on your focus. But yet we find ourselves in the middle of that getting discouraged. We find ourselves in the middle of that getting down. We find ourselves in the middle of that wondering why things are happening the way they're happening from such turn away. Just turn away. Just walk away from it. Just don't even pay attention to it. You want to know what the word says? This is what the word says. Stop the meds. You got a problem? You need Adderall? 
No, you don't. Turn away from that. Turn away from that. You know what that does to you? Let me tell you what that does to you. You think it gives you focus? It doesn't give you focus. It gives you a consistency of being dull so you can make it in the matrix. So you can function in the matrix. So things will work out okay in the matrix. Let me tell you, we're not living in the matrix. We may be, get plugged in and go into the matrix and it may be our day, but our reality is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, came and saved my life. He's got a plan for me and I'm going to get somebody saved and pulled out of the matrix along the way because I'm going to take them to heaven with me when I go. That's got to be our life. That's got to be our mode. That's got to be what it's all about. Who cares about doctrine? Whether this is right or this is wrong. If we get them saved, let God work on their life for his good, according to his glory, according to his honor, because it's all about him anyway. We spend time worrying about if I believe what he believes, what she believes. Who cares? Get the book out. The book has got it all in there. And if you're calling out to God, seeking on the book, looking toward heaven, looking toward the future, looking for what God has for you, it'll all line up because his paths are sure. They're full of peace. They're full of good works. They're full of fruit. They're full of everything that is wonderful because his plan for you is pure and he's like don't even waste your time from such just turn away people that love themselves more than they love anything people that have the pride of life people that are boasters people that think they're better than you just turn away from them. don't even try to be accepted from them just turn away from them let them find out why you're uncovered why is that person uncovered why is that person turning away why is that person not the same as everybody else what are they doing different how come i can't get them the way i want them to be the same way i am bound up but we try to fit in and I say take the cover off everybody say take the cover off take the cover off speaking of covers the Lord dealt with me and he says don't you realize that with all of this on taking the cover off don't you realize that you're a spirit being that I made you I created you you're absolutely incredibly perfect in my image you're absolutely made perfect in my image. The way I designed you and formatted you with exactly every little detail on you is absolutely perfect in my image. I said, Lord, what are you trying to say? He says, on earth I had to get a tent for you to go in. This is nothing but a tent. Let me tell you something. You work on it. You try to keep it right. Let me tell you, this is a tent. This right here, one day when we're all in heaven, is not really going to matter because it is a tent. And that's what the Word of God says. So much so, turn with me to Luke chapter 2. You know the story. It's getting ready to come around. It's that time of year. Anybody been Christmas shopping? Luke chapter 2, Jesus, the Son of the Almighty God, had to get a tent to come in. He had to be born of a virgin. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Everybody say, this is just a tent. Let's get the reality back on. We think this is who I am. And if this isn't right, then I'm not right. And if people don't, if people can't see me a certain way, because if I'm not a certain way, people are going to not accept me or accept me. This is nothing but a tent. The real you is inside. And let me tell you what, God made it very intricately detailed. Wow. Because you are so different than me and I am very different from you. But he made you absolutely perfect in his image. After his likeness. So God had to find a way to get his son into the earth. And so he said, we're going to have her be born of a virgin. Because he needed to get his son onto the earth. And the reason why you're on earth today, you spirit man, you. You godly person, you that God made. Let me tell you why we're on the earth today. Because God put us in a tent. We got it all wrong, folks. We got the image thing going. We've got the society thing going. We've got the look and the perception and the persona and how to imitate who we're in front of to be the way we need to be so they'll accept us. And some of us are rated a 10 on that scale. If you're really good at it, raise your hand. If you're really good at it being how you need to be when you need to be because you just have to do it, raise your hand. I know I'm not the only one in this building. Somebody raise their hand. Come on now. I'm talking to me, but I'm talking to you. 
Because some of you don't even think you can be how you need to be when you need to be, so you just get discouraged and down and you're just not. But God has called us to come out. God has called us to come out. Everybody say, come out. And I said, Lord, where are we going with the tent thing? And Lord, where are we going with the matrix? And where are we going with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life? Lord God, where are we going with this? And he said, in these last days, Mimi, I need you to get uncovered. I need you to do something you haven't done before. Yeah, you're comfortable. You're comfortable. You're moving through the workplace. Yes, you're seeing what's going on. And when somebody needs prayer, you're stepping out and you're grabbing their hand and saying, let's pray right now. And that's all good. But we need in these last days a distinction between right and wrong, left and right, up and down, side to side. We need a distinction. And I said, Lord, what are you trying to say? And he said, and suddenly. I said, and suddenly. Whoa. If we could really see who we are in the image of God. If we could really know who we are in the image of God. If we could really grasp who God has made us to be. If we could really see who we are in God and what God has made us to be and how God sees us, how God sees us, how God sees us, how Father God sees us, how Father God on the throne in heaven is looking down on us. If we could really see how God sees us, we would stop being the way we've been being. We would stop it. We would cut it off. We would turn away. We would turn aside. And we would realize that we've got to get the mind of Christ on us. See, when God does something supernatural, absolutely supernatural, absolutely undefined, a miracle, it is like this. And God wants to use us in these last days to take and reach into the matrix and grab somebody just like this and yank them out and yank them out, yank them out of sin, yank them out of despair, yank them out of discouragement, yank them out of giving up, yank them out of being sick, yank them out of having infirmities on them. God wants us to reach in and yank them out. But it's not going to happen the way we've been programmed for it to happen. We've got to come out from being undercover. It's not going to happen with the counseling. And I understand. And you know, if this would have happened and that would have... We've tried all that. But I'm talking about radical change. I'm talking about change that once you're changed, you're changed and you don't come back. You, Cynthia, stand up. She's a miracle of God that she's here absolute miracle of God. Talk about a testimony. Talk about being yanked out of a drug full life that was absolutely killing her. Talk about being ripped out of abusive situations. That is what I'm talking about. And suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, who has a testimony of and suddenly? We need to fill the church up with the end suddenly. We need to fill the church up with, here's another testimony. We need to fill the church up with, look at this person that walked away from this situation and they're free. We need to fill the church up with testimonies. We don't need to worry about hearing stuff for ourselves anymore. We've heard so much that if there wasn't a church, we could live off the stuff we heard the rest of our lives. I'm talking about and suddenly. Luke. Two, verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying. You see, Jesus was born and nobody knew he was born. But when God does something, he will not let anybody forget that he's been in the middle of it because then suddenly something took place that wasn't something normal that needed to take place, but it took place because it had to take place to, to absolutely confirm that this was the real deal. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward all men. Because Jesus had to come and he had to get in a tent to be here on the earth. And what you're wearing today and who you are, you are a tent. That is all that part of you is. But the real you, the person that God made, the person that God created, the person that God is literally building heaven for is the real you. Now, let me read to you another story about a person in a tent. Go with me to Luke chapter 9, verse 39. And lo, the Spirit taketh him, and he suddenly cried out and teared himself, and he foamed again. And bruising him hardly, departed from them. But let's go, let's go, let's go, let's keep going, let's keep going just a little bit further. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering, saying, O faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you and suffer with you? Bring this son hither. So there's a guy that's brought to Jesus that has got demons in him, and When the Spirit of God was moving, all of a sudden, he ripped and ripped and ripped on his tent. Some of you have been ripping on the tent God puts you in. And you've been hurting your own self. I was in Nicaragua a year and a half ago, and we were at a church in Leon, and it it really pierced me so hard that I will never forget a girl came up and she said, pray for me, pray for me. She was in the back of the church and I said, lift up your hands. And when she did, I literally saw slices all up and down her arms, all the way down, at least 80 or 90 slices. <clears throat> she said, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Wanting to be free, wanting to be free from the torture of the tent that she's been in, that she did not accept being in and that she wanted to be free from. And let me tell you, I prayed for her. And I had other girls pray for her and we believed that that spirit would leave her from torturing herself. But if you think that it's only in Nicaragua and that's not here in Hopewell, Colonial Heights, Petersburg, Chesterfield, y'all have another place that you need to be because there are teenagers right now in this community that don't know what to do. And so the abuse, when it gets so bad, they cut themselves. When it gets so bad, they scratch themselves. When it gets so bad, they claw themselves. And that is closer to home than what you absolutely know. I'm talking about that when the Spirit of God is upon someone and suddenly the reaction takes place. Why did the reaction take place? Because the freedom needed to come and the only time we're ever going to get a reaction and suddenly is when the Spirit of God steps out from us and uncovers who we are and we let Him use us to bring freedom in people's lives. We let Him use us to take the bound that's the oppressed and make them free. We think it's up to the pastors, but it's not. Now let's really get real. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all in one accord in one place. Sometimes... We've got to be in one accord. Sometimes we've got to be in one place in one accord. There's certain things we've got to believe God for that's going to be probably a bigger battle than we can fight on our own. So we need to say, brother, sister, let's pray. Let's get together. Let's pray. Sometimes. So in this this verse, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. Verse 2. And suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Go ahead, next verse. And there appeared to them cloven tongues as a fire that sat on each of their heads, that sat on each of them. Cloven tongues as a fire. What happened in that room? 
I'm going to tell you what happened. They were in one mind. They were in one accord. They did not worry about who they are, what they looked like, what their problems were at home. But they said, God, we're here to seek your face. We're here to seek your face. We're here to look to you. We're, look, we're here to look past the matrix, past where we're at. We're here to look to you because you are the God, the eternal father. And, and suddenly the power filled the place. So much so, turn with me to Acts chapter 16, verse 26. Because I'm telling you, I need an end suddenly to happen in my life. I'm looking for an end suddenly to happen where I meet somebody that just needs me to take the cover off and say, yo, you, right there, come with me. I know what you need. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison, whoa, the foundations of the prison, so that the foundations of the prison, I'm talking about people that were in jail because they were preaching the gospel. And suddenly there was like, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors, all the doors, all the doors, all the doors were open and everybody's bands and everybody's bands were loose. Why? because and suddenly and suddenly because they were only in a matrix it really didn't matter anyway that they were really in prison did it really matter that they were bound in prison because they really weren't bound and they really weren't in prison it was just their flesh that was bound it was just their flesh that was in prison that's all it was so and suddenly there was a great earthquake and let me tell you what happened their bands were loosed next verse And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing that the prison doors were open, he drew out his sword. And he was going to kill himself. He was so freaked out about it because the end suddenly took over. He didn't know what to do. The end suddenly took over. It was a God moment. He didn't know what to do and what to say. Supposing that the prisoners had fled. Next verse. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm. He uncovered himself. Do yourself no harm. For we are all here. Because we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're not fleeing because we want you for the kingdom of God. Next verse. And then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling. And he fell down before his Paul and Silas. Next verse. My God. And he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? I'm talking about an end suddenly to change somebody's life. The person that was in charge really wasn't in charge at all because Paul and Silas had God in charge. And they brought him out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Next verse. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved and your whole house. Why? Because when that suddenly happens and one person gets saved and they get radically changed and they get a new mindset and they realize that they're just living in a tent, that God's got a plan for them. When they're saved, it's so transforming that then not just they got saved, but their whole house got saved because they took it back with them. And some of us here today, we need an end suddenly. Some of us here today, we've been walking the walk of life and loving God and living for God. But we need an end suddenly. We need to put away from us the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Because we need an end suddenly to take over in our life so that we can get uncovered and do something for God that will change radically the course of nature. Somebody lift up your hand and say, let it be me, God. Use me, God. Help me uncover myself, God. I was sleeping Saturday morning, and in the middle of sleeping, I went into a dream. This may be for somebody here. It may not be for somebody here. It really doesn't matter. It ties into the message. But I was in a dream, and I saw in a dream somebody was messing with a panel box. And I saw them trying to work the panel box so that the breaker that cut off would cut back on and stay on. And when they did, there was problems with the breaker. 
in the panel box and, 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 and it wasn't staying on. And when it did stay on, I, I got nervous in the dream that <clears throat> it was going to catch the whole panel box on fire. Is there anybody here that's been messing with a panel box? Stand up, Irvin. The Lord specifically told me somebody was going to be here and they've been messing with a panel box. They've been having issues with a panel box. God's got a word for you. Come right down to the front. It's a word of knowledge. But God also said to me that in this sermon, some of you've got the breakers off in your panel box in your life. In your life, you've turned the breakers off because you don't know what the power is going to be and how it's going to be. And you're kind of afraid of working with the power that God has put in your life. If you are here today and you know in your life that you have cut certain breakers off in your life and you've not let, let the power of God move through your life, stand up to your feet right where you're at. If you have cut off certain breakers in your life because you just don't want to deal with it and you're not sure exactly how to deal with it, cut it, stand right now to your feet because God wants to show you how to turn those breakers in your life back on for his glory and his honor to uncover you to do the end suddenly in your life right now the end suddenly in your life because you've been working with no power you've been working with no authority you've been working with no no electricity in your life and God wants to give you the power back in your life hallelujah somebody raise your hands somebody raise your hands somebody raise your hands right now say God move God move Irvin God showed me you in that dream. And I said, God, I can't give that word in my own church. It's a word of knowledge, and I'm scared to give a word of knowledge in my own church. But it's not even about me, Irvin. It's about you right now and God. Lord, show him exactly where to turn the power on in his life for you. Ignite the flame in his life right now. Ignite the flame in his li life right now. If you are standing, I want you to come to the front right now because we're going to pray. All of us are going to pray right now. In closing, we're going to pray right now. If you're standing right now because you need the breakers cut back on in your life to have the power to uncover who God has made you to be, come to the front right now because this message is for you. This message is for me. It's about time, church, that we turn the breakers in our life back on. It's time that we put away the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye, the pride of life. It's time that we turn away from trying to fit in. It's time that we turn away from trying to make things work. It's time that we turn away from sin. It's just time we turn away. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody pray right now. Say, God, help me. God, help me. See, you've got to call out to him. You're the one that's got the power to turn the breaker back on. You've got to call out to him. Say, God, help me. Say, God, help me right now. God, help me. God, help me. God, help me. God, help me. God, help me right now. I, I can't even hear you calling out to him. Take a moment and call out to him. Say, God, help me. Help me make a new step. Help me make a new plan. Help me uncover the gifts you've given to me in my life. Help me, God, right now. Help me, God, right now. Help me, God, right now. Help me flip the breakers back on in my life to show God the power that you've put in my life to make a difference and a change. Father God, let me come out from the world. Let me be separate. Lord, don't let me touch that unclean thing anymore, God. No more, God. I don't want to touch it anymore, God. I'm tired of touching it. God, help me right now, God. Lord, God, even though I'm great at what I do, make me better at what I do. Reign in my life, oh God. Give me an anointing to make a difference. Give me an anointing. Give me and suddenly the power of God to reach the hardest, worst employees, the hardest, worst peers, the hardest, worst, strong out people that I'm around. Help me reach the hardest ones for you, God. Right now, God, 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 right now, God. In Jesus' name. And the Bible says, and you shall be endued with power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. The Bible says you shall receive power. The Bible says you shall receive power. The Bible says you shall receive power. You shall receive power. The Bible says you shall receive power. The Bible says that you shall receive power. The Bible says you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. Right now, God, give Richard the power, God. The Bible says you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be witnesses.
God, Lord, the power is in Edwin. Help him cut the breakers, all of them, back on, God. All of them, back on, God. Lord, waken this man of God for you that he would tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means would even harm him, oh God. Oh God, I thank you for the power, the power right now, God, the power right now. Lord, turn the breakers on in his life. Give him the power, God, right now. Right now, God, give him the new power. Give her a new power, God. A new outlook, a new power, God, where they've given up. God, show them that you are there. You are hope. You are life. You are encouragement to them. God, right now, give them the power. A new mindset. A new mindset. Looking for the journey. Looking forward for the journey. Who God's going to put you in contact with. How Ed suddenly is going to take place. How Ed suddenly is going to take place. The power. The power. The power. Oh, God, right now, give them the power. Father God, give them the power to make a difference and a change, oh God. It's yours, 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 it's yours. I said it's yours, it's yours, it's yours.